Since the first radio antenna was constructed at the Bell Telephone Laboratories by Karl Jansky in 1932, astronomers around the world have been using radio telescopes and radio interferometry as a whole to detect radio signals from space. On most occasions, these radio signals are emitted from relatively close objects around the Milky Way galaxy. Very vital information regarding our Sun, planets such as Jupiter, and the radio wave spitting supermassive black hole called Sagittarius A at the center of our galaxy have been collected using radio telescopes and the like. However, these tools haven't been able to detect radio signals from deeper corners of the universe, as these signals are usually quite weak and hard to detect, even when multiple antennas are used. As the years have gone on, technology has vastly improved, and thus, so has our understanding of cosmic radio signals. And with the expansion of our understanding comes the expansion of our abilities, making it easier and easier to pinpoint fascinating radio signals from any place and any time, across millions of millennia and billions of light years. It's why astronomers' most recent discovery, a radio signal detected from a galaxy 9 billion years away, is all the more intriguing. Not only do we have the oldest and farthest radio signal ever seen on record, we have a new key to unlocking precious information regarding ancient galaxies and the total history of the universe. Let's investigate why. In December of 2022, two McGill University researchers by the names of Arnab Chakaborty and Nirupam Roy published their findings of an incredibly old and distant radio signal emitted by a galaxy 8.8 .8 billion light years away. The radio waves themselves were picked up by the giant meter wave radio telescope in the Pune district of India, and the findings were published in a study found in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. The discovery meant not only did astronomers have access to the first ever radio signal broadcast from such a distance, but also the first ever radio signal from such a time period. The radio signal coming from a location 8.8 .8 billion light years away also means it came from a location that existed deep within the universe nearly 9 billion years ago. This would have been in the early phases of the universe when it was estimated to only be around 4 to 5 billion years old. It goes without saying, the universe and all of the galaxies within it looked much different 9 billion years ago, double the amount of time since Earth was formed in our solar system. In other words, the radio signal received a couple of months ago is older than the Earth, even if the Earth lived two of its own lives between then and now. This radio signal emitting galaxy is so far and so old, it doesn't even have a proper moniker as of February 2023. The only naming signifier the galaxy has is its technical reference, SDSS J0826 plus 5630, or plus 5630 for short. In terms of what the exact type of galaxy existed at this precise position and time in the universe, odds are will never know for certain. However, one bit of information astronomers do have in regards to the galaxy's chemical makeup is its gas contents compared to other known galaxies. Plus 5630 is thought to contain twice as much star-forming gas than the galaxies found surrounding the Milky Way. Astronomers aren't sure if its age may have anything to do with it, but this information could teach researchers and historians but the amount of star fuel certain galaxies had in ancient history as compared to modern history. The discovery of galaxy plus 5630 was only possible due to a useful tool known as the hydrogen line, also called the 21 centimeter line or the HI line. A hydrogen line is a line on the electromagnetic radiation spectrum in which a neutral hydrogen atom sees a change in energy. 
In other words, all neutral hydrogen wavelengths are measured at a frequency that equals around 21 centimeters long of a vacuum wavelength emitted in free space. This realization allowed astronomers to start using the detection of neutral hydrogen wavelengths as promising leads to finding new and undiscovered galaxies across even the farthest stretches of the cosmos. Many people wonder why it has to be neutral hydrogen. Throughout modern history, it has grown more and more apparent that neutral hydrogen atoms are the exact type of fuel needed to form stars within galaxies. Thus, with the presence of neutral hydrogen atoms means the presence of stars, and with enough of both, galaxies are readily detectable. Of course, all of this is dependent on the abilities of astronomers on Earth. Neutral hydrogen atoms and their 21 centimeter wavelengths emit very faint radio signals that aren't always noticed by earthly instruments. This helps explain why we usually only capture these signals within a couple of billion light years of Earth, and rarely the 9 billion light years, like plus 5630. To catch the older, more distant galaxies, astronomers must focus on their redshifts, a unit of measurement that calculates distances and ages of various objects found throughout the universe. Again though, it should be noted that even using redshift measurements hasn't guaranteed the discovery of far out galaxies like plus 5630. Ancient wonders of the cosmos like this require yet another tool, or rather a phenomenon, to assist astronomers with detecting remote or hidden galaxies in the darkest and oldest reaches of space. The tool in question? Look no further than the gravitational lens, a natural telescope only Mother Nature could love, or create. A gravitational lens truly is more of a process than a tool. In scientific terms, gravitational lensing is an effect in which matter is distributed between a source of light in the background and the observer. To complete the effect, light bends around an object in the foreground so that it still may travel to the line of sight point on Earth. Due to this, gravitational lenses are often used to detect old, far away objects by using another massive space object closer to our planet, and magnifying the light of the background object around its high redshift edges. Gravitational lensing then amplifies the light of the background object, allowing us to detect wavelengths and other radio signals that we otherwise would not be able to obtain. Of course, this sounds pretty straightforward, but it's not as simple as one object moving in front of another and improving their faint signals. Rather, the middle object must be so large and so filled with mass, they must warp spacetime in their general vicinity to create this natural telescopic effect. These objects range from galactic superclusters to solo galaxies featuring supermassive black holes. Gravitational lensing can also refract the line of sight, or in other words, create multiple glances at the far distant space object. For a real world example, think of what happens when a smaller mirror is placed in front of and pointed towards a larger mirror. When the light bounces from the source to the smaller mirror and then to the larger mirror, the subjects in the larger mirror appear doubled or refracted when seen in the smaller mirror. Depending on how the smaller mirror is held, one could either refract two versions of the reflection or nearly infinite versions of the reflection. Gravitational lensing provides this same effect, usually revealing two versions of the faraway object's radio signals rather than the actual reflection in a mirror. Having multiple angles of a radio signal or various magnifications of an object can only teach us more about said object and give us more information regarding ancient galaxies and other light sources. At the end of the day, everything here on Earth revolves around the sun, both literally and figuratively. And much like we are attempting to use the power of the sun to fuel our lives and create sustainable solar energy as reliable power sources, Astronomers are trying to figure out how to use the sun itself as a gravitational lens. Solar gravitational lensing is actually a concept derived by Albert Einstein himself 
in 1936. He calculated that at approximately 542 astronomical units from the Sun, or just over 50 billion miles, all rays of light produced by the Sun would converge at a singular point. By way of a space probe or other celestial instrument, researchers could then use the Sun as a gravitational lens, most likely finding ancient and faraway galaxies never before seen behind our central star. Not only would we discover new and enlightening galaxies, but the study of objects such as exoplanets would evolve in wondrous ways with the inclusion of a solar gravitational lens. For example, a physicist for NASA published a theoretical project in 2020, in which a probe would venture out to the 542 AU positioning away from the Sun and use its lens to rebuild the actual imagery of an exoplanet nearby. This would be possible thanks to a new and improved 25 kilometer scale surface resolution. At this resolution, one could hone in on the exoplanet's features and visualize its surface. Further, this could unveil more information regarding the habitability of the exoplanet and planets just like it out in the universe. Unfortunately, the technological hurdles one must overcome to reach the 542 AU positioning away from the Sun are difficult. Even with the most modern technology available to us, it would take at least 230 years for a space probe to reach this point, and that's banking on an error-free mission. Space probes already en route, such as Voyager 1, are not expected to last long enough to make readings at this focal point nor does it carry the equipment necessary to reconstruct exoplanet images. Nevertheless, astronomers and engineers alike will continue brainstorming ways to use the Sun as a gravitational lens. If anything, this newfound discovery of plus 5630 will only push the tempo on these efforts, inspiring so many to use the incredible gifts of natural telescopes to inform us on the earliest versions of the galaxy and what, or who else, might be out there.